Hi, everyone. Welcome to Domain Sherpa. Today is a super cool episode of Down the Rabbit Hole talking about .eth domains with Shane, Drew, and the one and only Daniel Got Hits, aka 260.eth. We talk all about the recent surge in ENS domains, what makes them special, the utility and community benefits, and how they stand out in Web3. Having seen some of these trends play out in the past with Web2 domains, it's really interesting to see how this is happening and really exciting watching these new markets develop. And remember, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can also watch the video version at domainsherpa.com and also watch some of our episodes on our YouTube channel at ds.tv. You can also check us out on Apple and Spotify and other podcast platforms as well. And as usual, big shout out to our sponsor, dan.com, the number one place in the world to buy and sell your domains with a special platform made for domain investors. And last but certainly not least, with NamesCon Global coming up in Austin, Texas at the end of August, we've got a promo code for our audience to save 20% on tickets. That code is M as in man, P as in Peter underscore domain Sherpa. Again, MP underscore domain Sherpa. And you can use that when you register at namescon.com. All right, with all that, it's time to get into this episode of Down the Rabbit Hole here on Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. It don't matter what you say, it ain't no way that you messing with my team today. It don't matter what you do. What's up, Sherpa Network? Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Jonathan Tenenbaum, AKA JT, AKA J on, and I'm the host and producer of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Today's show is a down the rabbit hole. We haven't done one of these in a minute. And as we say here on Domain Sherpa, all roads lead to domains. And in the reverse, our work in domains has us venturing all the time into different areas and things, some familiar crypto, NFTs, other digital assets, and then others. Hence the jump down the rabbit hole. And today's show's topic is something related. It is the .eth and ENS domains, which have been on fire lately. So for you domain maxis, you guys are still in the right place. For you .com maxis, I don't know that this is a safe space, but it may be actually depending on how we kind of end up and what we talk about. So anyway, appreciate everybody for tuning in and I super appreciate I got some really great guests with me. Let's talk about who's who and what's what. Um, but like I said, we're going to talk about ENS domains, a little bit of blockchain, Web3, Handshake, Unstoppable, full disclosure. You know, we've got a big old portfolio of .com domains. We've got Handshake domains. We're invested in Unstoppable, just so everybody knows what's good. And uh, but yet domains for days, domains for days. But NFA, you know what I'm saying? Not financial advice, <laughs> but let's ride. Let me introduce my Sherpas over to my right. I got my boy, Andrew Rosner, a.k.a. Morpheus, a.k.a. the Dirk Diggler domain names, a.k.a. the <laughs> Sniper, aka Blackbeard, the domain pirate. <laughs> and you know, which this was the offline conversation we were just having. I mean, I don't really know which pirates were like the most badass pirates. So I think that might have to be its own down the rabbit hole. But you know, word is Blackbeard was kind of a G, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was a there was this one female pirate and something lobe or something. Hey, she was a real, like real ass gangster. Like she uh, she just she got off on just like really torturing people and like really, you know, messing them up. Hey, if you're going to uh, be a pirate, like you got to be a full on, like you can't be a Disney pirate. doesn't you know matter what, what you like, want to do. Be whatever a real, you're like, going to do, it, whatever, you're, whatever you're going to do in life, go all the way. Go big, go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Blackbeard, Once go you cross hard. that bridge, it's like, why are you going to, why are you going to be like a semi pirate? You know what yeah, I mean? I like, you're going to cross that bridge. You better go hard. Yeah, unless you're trying to get that Disney check, you know what I mean? And then you got to like, then you got to be a little bit more balanced. All right, but let me keep it moving. All right, down to my lower right, I got my boy Shane Culture, a.k.a. Sugar Shane, a.k.a. Honey Shane, a.k.a. Mike Rowe, a.k.a. Blame It on the Shane, House of Shane, the Culture Vader, Blue Oyster Culture, the, the Culture fur. Personality. What's white up? Fur. The Honey. One of the first actual real, like in real life uses of an NFT was his Captain White and Fur, right? His board ape, which you could see on the back. Back, the white with the white ape you actually have him facing facing right or you know what i'm saying like you did that for the little for the effect I did that for, yeah exactly and uh but you had the homie on the label of the honey which was an nft in itself which i still have and uh you know big shout out to joe ruiz the artist i mean that was uh i haven't even cracked this, that. this is the one-on-one though this was the gold this is the gold wax he did dip. i know i you got, got saying that this is the this oh, this is the go big version only 26 not bottles yeah, bam, this isn't bam. for this isn't for the plebs. 
This isn't for the plebs. Anyway, all right, let's keep it moving, though, because most excitedly, and for me, you know, I, let me introduce our special, special guest. So we got the one and only Daniel Got Hits, a.k.a. 260.e, a.k.a. Diego Marijuana, <laughs> a.k.a. Landon Dapper Donovan, <laughs> a.k.a. Dude Imperfect. Let's get it. So for Dude those of you who don't know, <laughs> Daniel Got Hits, is a, he's a board ABI club holder, freestyle soccer creator with over 500,000 followers on social media. Man, dude fell in love with NFTs like all of us, recently became an active voice in the Web3 community, loves onboarding new people into the space, and understandably has really become one of the leading evangelists for the .eth and ENS domains. Uh, he is that dude. If you are in and around the NFT space, you've definitely seen him. You've seen his his posts and all that good stuff. And uh, so for this show, it's like, you know, it's, it's our honor and privilege to have you on here talking all this smack with us, man. So Daniel, welcome to the show, bro. Hey, what's good, guys? The honor is all mine. I was wondering if I was going to have any AKAs, so I'm very uh, <laughs> pleasant. Oh, surprised. Everybody gets the AKAs, huh? Dude, the Diego marijuana is a good one. I know, like, I have, like, blue hair, and I look like I'm, like, stoned out of my mind, but I actually, I'm, like, a pretty sober guy. It's, like, pretty funny, but people <laughs> people are always disappointed because I have, like, a smiley face tattoo on my hand. They think I'm, like, <laughs> yeah, off yeah, the yeah. deep end, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. I'm going to have to start using that AKA, but, yeah, guys, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it's super awesome to be on here with, like, heavy hitters like you guys and hopefully share a little bit of uh you know info on on what's going on and yeah it's going to be exciting to talk about yeah and and this that's a perfect segue because i mean i think for those that haven't been paying a ton of attention you know you've got the dot eth domains which have become you know sort of the the leaders in the clubhouse on the blockchain domains although we can talk about that there's different you know uh you know options out there if you will but you know and and most recently we've seen you know huge sort of waves of you know the numerics and the, just the increase in price what i mean by numerics i'm talking like three character dot eths right like 260 eth which is daniels and you know zero 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 dot eth and you know we saw a lot of these same waves and, and, and now the numerics are even extending value out into you know the four character numerics and potentially fives or what we've seen now are these country sort of groupings which is effectively like the flag emoji for a country like the us uh, so like Saudi Arabia, stuff like that. that. And then the numerics following those, which they're referring to is like the, you, you know, I think, well, Daniel, you tell me it's like, uh, what is it? Is it the 999 club, the 10,000 sure. club? Yeah, sure. So I'll keep it um, as brief as possible. So just to give people the overview, uh, the minimum amount of characters that an ETH domain can have is three. So it's a little bit different to dot coms and dot coms. You could just literally have right, Elon Musk has X.com, right? Um, you could have one, two, three, whatever. Wait, I sold that to him, by the way. <laughs> oh, what? That's insane. Yeah, I think yeah. I think I actually heard about this. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's legendary. I mean, that's so legendary. Um, but to be fair, there's only three one character domains. They, really? So originally they were all registered. There was three that actually went into use in time before ICANN said, no, you don't, and took them all back, right? And so there was three that got grandfathered. Z.com was Nissan for their Z cars. Q.com was uh, 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 not Quest. Was it Quest? No, it was uh, uh, the other telecom with Q. Qual Qualcomm and or something? Qual yeah, it was Qualcomm. And then um, and then X.com, which was actually originally uh, uh, this, this lawyer, small town lawyer, uh who sold it to elon for his original what what became paypal and then it was owned by paypal paypal sold to ebay ebay split paypal off into a separate public company uh public company or, or or whatever vice versa and uh and then um ultimately uh i acquired it from paypal for elon Damn, that is insane. Yeah, I definitely can't match that story, but hopefully one, maybe one day. That's a, that's fucking insane. Like that's so crazy. I I'm like uh, I, I was actually just trying podcast. to. Yeah, I was actually just trying to give some color though, like because yeah, you know, it, it's not entirely true, right? So so with the dot right, com, just to give there, people there the context. The three, yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. that but there are but there are two character dot coms are, are as common yes, as they are totally, as far as right. they exist and you know are you know and uh, yep. so yeah, but no, I think otherwise the point's valid. But go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. That's crazy. Um, and so you know, with the dot eth, I guess they're still actually you know not ruling it out. Maybe in a couple, I think the creator of ENS 
um, it's like a DAO, right? And so it has to go through all these, you know, you know, votes and everything with the community, but maybe like three, four, five years out, they may look at introducing like one or two characters once the ecosystem is sort of big enough. Mm. Um, but for now it's three, right? So that's why there's such an emphasis. If people just randomly log in and they see all these three number domains selling for 50, 60, a hundred thousand dollars, $300,000 for zero, zero, zero. Um, it's because there is no zero or zero, zero. That is the yep. first one, right? Zero, zero, yeah, zero. Yeah. So just that context uh, as background. And so all these three number um, ENSs were just sitting there um, and they just started getting slowly sort of picked up um, around March, March, April. And there was still like 500 left one day. And then the next day there was like, these had been there for years, by the way. And so one day someone well, notices uh, in the group sorry, chat. Sorry, yeah. a little more color on that because actually originally I don't think they allowed the release of three letters. It was seven letters at first. Uh, yeah, six, yeah, 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 I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, way back, right? But in the last yeah. like, two years, these these three number domains were sitting there because the registration yeah. fee, the renewal fee is about six to $700 a year. So it's a little steep for you know people just in NFTs to speculate on. But one day, like a whale just came in and just started registering. Boom, 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 boom. We're all looking at the registration bot. And it's like, you know, one per minute, bang, 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 bang. And before you know it, there was only like 200 left. And we all started being like, oh man, these are going to like sell out today. Like I, I, and I even didn't really get it at first. And I was kind of like, Hmm. And then I just started seeing all of them about to sell out. And so I minted two of them and uh, luckily, but I mean, I, I could have got as many as I wanted. They were just sitting right there. Right. But that's how it goes. Sometimes you don't really know uh, you know, how valuable something is until it really just sells out. And then you're like, shit, I, why didn't I get that? Right. Uh, so no. they, well, they uh, instantly yeah. just went to like 10 ETH. And so they were 0.2 ETH to register within like three days, they were like 10 ETH floor. And uh, it's like one of the only things I've seen in NFTs that had a huge run up and didn't like crash. It's like it went to 10, then they went to like 15. Then on like the huge crash that we had like last month, they went down to about eight, eight, nine. And then they went back up to 37 ETH like last week. Now they're about 25. Um, So they really just are not coming back down. And so what happened is this like 999 sort of community started forming and, you know, there's technically a thousand of them, including zero, 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 but it's just called the 999, I guess, because yeah. the last number is nine. I think it's cooler that it's 999 to be it's honest. It's cooler, right? Saying. It's cooler. And yeah, it will yeah. piss some people off because they'll be like, no, it's 1000. And be like, okay, bro, like whatever. But you uh, got to have Taylor yeah. WTF burn one like a, like a dummy, like you do. With yeah, his we got to get someone to burn. That's true. That's true. And so it's the 999. And so what we randomly, you know, just a community effort formed and people made a discord and it's token gated. So you have to own a, a 999 domain to get in that sort of uh, channel in the, in the discord. And we have a couple of uh, group chats. People just throw you in if you're in 999 and sort of just like getting to know all the other holders. And uh, yeah, those have exploded. And then, you know, after that, people started realizing that, you know, and I'm not, you know, advocating for anything beyond the initial 999. I think that's cool. Everything else we can speculate, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys like, yo, it's going to be mega valuable, but I'm just throwing out what's happening. So after that, the uh, Arabic numerals started going crazy uh, because people started pulling up all these pictures of like uh, Saudi like license plates because they're still in Arabic numerals and like Rolex has like an Arabic uh, dialed like, uh, you know, day date watch that's like a couple hundred K or something. And uh, people- I got one. yeah. All right, yeah. There we go. All right, wait, let's so wait, hold up, hold, hold up, hold up, hold uh, up. Let's let's so wait, there's a lot to unpack and there's a lot of cool stuff here. First of all, Shade, you caught on the wave for a second. You bought and sold at some point of a, a three character. Yeah, numeric, so right? I mean, remember I was the numeric guy in dot com. So I led remember I led the 4N charge back in 2011. I mean, yeah. wow. I gave talks on it. The, I, the, I no, was the come Daniel, on. Was that that was like 13, 14, was it 13? Was it? Well, yeah, yeah. So. Four, 14 because into 15 ended, was the wave, it, it, was the wave. Exactly. The wave ended, the wave crashed in 15, yeah. right? So okay. 14. Uh, it was like where shit got crazy, where we were getting up to like four, six 14, character numerics and stuff. Yeah, but wait. so towards the end of 14 is when we got up to the six characters. That, wow. you know, that, that shit went crazy. Well, yeah, because, so you know, for context, yeah, but, it, it, it started around 11 and, yeah, then, yeah. and then it ran to 15. Well, and so for the domain folks and for a lot of the folks in the audience, they're going to be like, look, we've seen this movie before, right? Because with right. dot coms, this happened. But, you know, to be fair, it played out over years. I mean, I think that's kind of to the point of like the value going up. And I mean, when you talk about scarcity, use and utility, I mean, that drives a lot of what we're talking about. And I want to talk on a couple of those points. But Shane, finish what you're you, your yeah, So I was going to say everything you see for me financially started with four number dot coms. I mean, literally my entire wow. portfolio 
And the millions that I've made over the course have come from me buying $500 for n.coms and selling them for 3000 to 30000 over the course of two years. Everything I have wow. was built on that. So <laughs> That's insane. It doesn't matter how they crash because as long as you cash out and are part of it, it, it that's how it works. And so bringing me to .eth, when I saw this happen, the first thing I did is I bought, a, I know what numbers to buy. And I can't remember what I bought, like something 6.6. Six, six. I bought it for three ETH. Because of the China, the China stuff? Because of the China stuff. I said no yeah. fours, no ones. Also, because this is a wallet address. You do not want to fuck up your numbers. You don't want a zero versus zero. You don't want an L versus one. If I'm mm. having you pay me, I don't want the number to be questionable. I want yeah, you to smart. pay me. Oh, that's a really a good visual, point. Yeah. That's what people 100%. are missing. That's the most important thing is I want you to pay me. So I sold my, I sold it from three ETH to 18 ETH in like three days. And it was holy not ETH. crap. That wasn't ETH at a thousand dollars either. That was ETH two months ago when it was much better. And then I bought 8877.eth because mm. to me, that's a beautiful wallet address. Like you're not going to mess up 8877 when you're paying me. Yeah. And it's a nice, beautiful Chinese number. So yeah. when I saw all this happening, <laughs> I thought, how in the world am I not making $10 million? Because I know this, I've played this out and I understand its value. So yeah. I, I love it. Like when I see you doing well, the first thing I do is what everybody else does. I go, why the hell wasn't that me? And I, why I did I not take advantage of it? Because I knew it. But secondly, I got in and cashed out. I made like 40 ETH in one week on dot. Holy ETH. moly. Yeah. Just quietly what, I, so, getting in and uh, out. Shane, Shane, I, I minted 8883.eth, but I sold it for 3.88. And I should never have done that because I didn't know. <laughs> and uh, no. I also minted a... Uh, I minted six triple seven and I still have that. Should I delist Ooh. that? It's, is that how good is that? Those are, that's what people are looking for. That's well, cause let's talk that. about, but, yeah. but oh, so just Roger. in terms of like the cycle of things, it's yes. like, so those things, the, 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 the ones that are actually truly unique, the ones that are like stand out that actually will ultimately potentially serve a purpose to an end user, such as having a, standout wallet address that can't be fucked up when somebody's sending you money um that won't get flushed out until the froth is out of the market right so so you know you'll see like the first big wave up which is you know probably about where we are you'll see some correction and then you know you'll see the outliers then pop at, at you know exponentially more than you know what just your average you know one four seven zero uh dot eth is going to sell for right um so it's yeah, it'll brand. take time. It'll take time, but that thing. cream, that cream yeah. rises. It'll and let's, so let's talk thing. really quick on utility, right? Because you know when you look at what you can use the domains for, right? They don't. They currently you cannot resolve them to an actual website. Correct? Is that right? Yeah. More but, more or less, you can on Brave browser and some other browsers. They're starting to resolve uh, with the .eth, but I think until something like a Google Chrome does it, I think it's premature yep. to be like, yeah, you can. It's it's difficult. Yeah. You can't really yep. easily Let build on it. Yeah, yeah. So when for, we're talking for, for the sake of discussion, uh, you know, unless you're like a 0.01 percent nerd, yeah, like the, basically all Red three domain names are non-resolvable for a website for all yeah. intents and purposes. Okay. I am fully cognizant of the ways in which you can, you know, navigate and get something resolved and blah blah blah. But, but you know, again, we've seen this movie before. Like, there's been alternative extensions many times over the years. They don't work because the mainstream browsers are completely 100% disincentivized yeah. to ever resolve these dom these domain names. And so by doing that, you require people to put, you know, download an extension or, you know, use some alternative browser like Brave or Opera <laughs> or, you know, whatever. And, and ultimately that doesn't work, right? There's a reason yeah. those guys, even without that added complexity and confusion, aren't gaining market share, you know, relative to a Chrome, relative to a Firefox, relative to yep. uh you know. And and I think that's a good point. So then, when we talk about utility for the .eth domains, you can send <laughs> ETH to uh, you can send ETH to an ETH uh, .eth domain, and pretty simply and easily, right? That's a pretty like, pretty baked in utility. And then there's also the flex, right? And then I think, and that was an interesting point that Daniel made about you know you've got uh, I think I saw something that somebody in Saudi, you know, it was for the license plate, right? Paid like a million dollars or something for the ten like, million, no. fifteen million, they paid uh, eleven million. million. It, it, yeah. I think the record was. This is a few years ago, may, may, may have been broken since, but 
It used to be um, for the number one license plate in Saudi Arabia, they paid $11 million. Okay, dope. And so, you know, the flex matters in a lot of places. We talked about China. The interesting thing about the China numerics, and we saw this play out, and I and, and Daniel, you and I offline have had some of this conversation. I mean, back when there was this big sort of China bubble in in, in domains and the numerics were going crazy and we were going as far, and I was running Namejet at, the, at that time. And I mean, six character, seven character numerics were fucking flying off the shelf, like consistently. We even had an app that on the iPhone that looked like the stock app. Consistently, it was, I was selling 200 a day on Namejet. So, (laughs) I mean, you know, consistently is an understatement. Yeah, so, but my point is, and then also, you know, we had the app that was tracking the floor prices of those, like the different brackets of domains, four character, and even like four character letters, like not, I mean, and that still Mm. exists to this day. I mean, there's still like, you know, Obviously, there was a, a big bubble, and then you know the cream has continued to sort of stay elevated, um, you know, for different reasons. We can talk about that stuff, but um, you know, but it was wild, and we're seeing a lot of that play out now in the same way. I think the other piece of utility, though, that's really interesting that was never part of the dot com piece was the community piece, right? And the community thing in, in Web three has always been something that has stood out as like an extra sort of added element that is really, really could be could can be special. Sometimes it's sort of a buzzword that's played out on some bullshit, yeah. but like, but like the 999 thing, for example, right? The fact that you could only have the total of 10 uh, or a thousand people in this group, this alpha group, all connected through something that, you know, something of real value, right? Where each one at a floor of 30 ETH, it's like, you know, it's being part of like a special car club, you know, shit like that, where it's like, and, you know, connected online in ways that like, you know, are new and novel and, and really dope. You know what I mean? Then it becomes a question, how big is the market? Are there a thousand people? Sure. Are there 10,000 people? Are there a hundred thousand people? And that's where I think it gets interesting because the more people that come in, the bigger the market, the more that you can even start to sort of press the edges of this bubble, if you want to call it that. But, you know, I think that, so, so, and then we're covering a lot of, a lot of ground. We'll get on the Saudi stuff in a sec. So, you know, do we think dot ETH compared to some of these other, like the unstoppable, the dot cryptos, you know, even dot XYZ, I know the Daniel and team at XYZ have it so that you could effectively set your XYZ domain to receive <clears throat> cryptocurrency mm-hmm. as a wallet. Well, connected to a wallet, you can right? do that with any legacy domain name under, uh, I don't want to say any, because I think some of the new GTLDs have different DNS settings, but, but I, I, I may be wrong, but for sure you can create you can turn it's quite interesting because it's actually the ens team that that, that created you know the, the the breakthrough so to speak in utilizing legacy dns uh uh, uh settings uh in order to make a legacy root domain name fully DNS compatible, compatible with, with the yeah. ens system and so you can now i can use i you know i have drew.com i can literally make drew.com my wallet in fact i should i don't know why i haven't done that but um <laughs> I've been sending ETH yeah. there for years, dog. That doesn't work. Wait till you That's crazy. It. Where's it going then? <laughs> wait till you see my pick. I a, a lot of people also don't know you can set, uh, you know, your Bitcoin receive address via ENS. So you can send Bitcoin to Drew.com. You can send Ethereum to Drew.com as it, long it, as it's, uh, it's just a yeah. routing. Yeah, it's just a routing. Yeah, as you know. long as Drew sets all that stuff up. Um, there's a couple of things I'd like to sort of illustrate that I think people may get uh, sort of misconstrued just based off everything you just said, JT, because that's 100% uh, correct. So first off, I think that, you know, Web2 domainers sort of thinking that the .eth people see ourselves as like this next competitor to takedown.com. Absolutely not, right? Never going to happen, um, at least in, you know, anytime soon. Like, you know, if I want to start a new business, I still need to go get a .com or a .io or a .xyz because I want to build on it. By the way, I have Daniel Nagari .eth. I'm trying to send it to him, but uh, oh. if anyone wants, to, yeah. So I got it for him. Um, Daniel, Daniel, cool Daniel, Dan, Daniel's a very good friend of mine. Uh, so awesome. if you want me to uh, hook that up, I can. Awesome, awesome. And yeah. so, um, you know, what I think is the main difference is that the .eth, for example, you know, if Nike wants to drop NFTs, I think where we start seeing it get interesting is you know, when it's on Etherscan or on the blockchain, or am I going to connect my wallet to this address to mint an NFT? I would love to know that that is Nike.eth and it's actually the right place that I'm not getting scammed. It's not like a 35, 40 character string of, of numbers. Uh, so I think that identity part is is important. And I think can, they're just different can, things. Can we pause there for one second? Because I think that's sure. a really excellent point, but it's a double-edged sword, okay? And so I've got a whole slew of reasons now i'm as much of a you know web to dot com guy as you're going to find right um mm-hmm. but i'm also you know 
I was probably the first person in the world you know, of, of domain names to be in the ENS space. Like I, I was there day one within the first hour of the ENS thing going live. Wow. I had thousands of, of ENS domains. I, I unfortunately lost that freaking wallet in our move from Panama to Portugal. And I Damn. no longer have any of them. And, and it actually a, looks like a little liquor yeah. for the wallet. You know no, it's saying? actually, you know, it's actually, you know, if you're out there and you listen to this, I don't know. I forgot, I forgot who the who the dude is. Uh, I got it somewhere in the browser tab. But anyways, I lost dot Rosner. I lost dot Andrew. I lost, you know, uh, Andrew dot ENS. And you lost the e. drop, right? Didn't you get the I, coin? And, you missed all the coins. They uh, all of it. All of it. All went into that uh, wallet. It's gone. That's a whole. Yeah, I, mean, I want to mention good. that too. But go, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so my point is the following. Um, so, you know, I'm an investor in unstoppable domains. I have a huge portfolio of handshake domains. I have a bunch of, you know, eat dot ETH domains, I, not as many as I used to have. I used to have thousands. Um, so my eyes are wide open. My mind is wide open. I am, you know, I'm a hustler like you. I saw, I saw opportunities in the six number.com four number. You know, five. I love opportunities. I don't hate on anybody for seeing an opportunity, jumping on it. In fact, big up. I hate the people that see that shit and are like, nah, you know, I'm not even going to try it. You know, like that's the shit I hate. Right. So I don't hate on dot ETH at all, but I do think it's important that people go into this shit with their eyes wide open, understanding mm -hmm. the technical and the, uh, let's say cultural, uh, limitations. And so, you know, we, we, we touched on the fact that basically you can't resolve a, a, a website at this stage. Right. And so in my mind, dot eth or you know any decentralized domain name it's not a replacement for dot com i've never ever thought about it in terms of oh this is you know this is the next web this is going to replace i think people look at web 3 and they think about web 3 is going to replace web 2 mm -hmm. and that that's sort of the thesis right but it, that's not the case at all i promise you like i i've spent a disordinate amount of time contemplating you know what can kill you know the legacy internet and 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 dot com in particular right and 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 i've yet to find anything that will what the way to think about this is actually it's just an addition it's like mm -hmm. another layer it's just it's it's an add it's it's additive to the internet that we know and love this is an additive it gives you you know native money through cryptocurrency and now you have you know native wallet and identity through decentralized domain names and that's the way to think about it. It's native money with a native wallet and native identity that can be, you know, transparent or pseudo anonymous. It's a new and token, a token economy. It's a new, it's new. It's not going to replace. I 100% agree. I think, yeah. Daniel, I think attitude. that was your point was it's that it's, com it's complimentary, right? And um, yeah. But, yeah. But, but here's where the double edged sword part comes in. So this all, this is a very long black beard way with a double edged of, sword, by the way. Well, it, it, it was coming. This is a long winded way of getting to, you know, your Nike comment, which was very important, right? Because that is the value here. The value proposition is that I go to buy something on chain, on the internet, or on Twitter, wh whatever, you know, from Nike. I'm going to do a mint, I'm going to do whatever the fuck it is. And I see Nike.eth and I feel like, all right, 100%, I can trust it. Now, in Web 2, the only reason that you can feel that way, that you can have that sense of confidence, the reason .com is as valuable as it is, the reason that, you know, it, it literally instills trust is because you can be damn sure that the only person <laughs> that owns Nike.com is Nike, right? But as you just alluded to with DanielMagari.com, which is actually a bad, uh, daddy, daddy, yeah. it's, a, it's a bad, it's a bad, you know, uh, 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 comparison because, same rules don't apply to you know personal names unless they're like famous. But uh, for all intents and purposes, anybody can get you know let's say Chanel .e. In fact, I I'm pretty sure somebody else actually owns it. Some I, I remember reading something right. on Twitter. Somebody owns Chanel .e. and then somebody else owns Swarovski Lego. .e. Lego was and somebody Lego. else has Lego .e. And, and somebody else has right. Yeah, Lego actually brought suit right. So. Um, so it's quite interesting because that defeats the purpose. You know, I, I remember two or three years ago, I gave a talk for one of these handshake conferences. And I said, look, guys, here's the deal. Love decentralized domains. Love what's going on here. If you all want this to be valuable, if you all want this to actually work, then you need to self-police. Because if you're out here trying to capitalize on other people's intellectual property rights, and those entities don't have the same 
um, legal measures. They don't have the same protections. They don't have the same rights that they have over here in Web 2. Well, then they're just going to ignore Web 3 because you can't they can't control in, it. If you can't control it, yeah. you can't operate yeah. in it. And so, like, I, it, it's very tricky because right now I wouldn't be confident that sending money to Nike.eth is going to go to Nike. In right. fact, I'd actually have a higher degree of confidence that if I said, you know, one anyway. to Nike.eth, it ain't going to Nike. You know what I mean? But it's Drew, what, what about, uh, you know, so so Adidas, Adidas owns Adidas.eth, right? And Puma owns Puma.eth. At what but these point- are two of the most progressive companies in the sure. world that are adopting Web3. Right. Yep. No, hundred percent. But I would, yeah. but to Daniel's point, and I think this is where I think, you know, the idea of Dadith becoming the leader in the clubhouse when it comes to the, you know, the sort of the web three name that companies. Oh, and that's brands not even a question, get. right? Just because of, of market cap, right? It's like, you know, everyone has to debate, you know, what, what you know, what's more important, e Ethereum or, or Bitcoin, Ethereum's going to flip Bitcoin. It's like, you're a freaking moron. You know what I mean? It's like, guys, look at the market cap, right? Market cap's the only thing you need to look at. Yeah. Look at the growth trajectory, look at the market cap. I don't give a shit about all these, you know, shit coins being developed. That doesn't matter. What matters is market cap, user adoption, right? This is a network effect. You know, the value here is the network effect and the security. And so, yeah. like, so, so Ethereum, you know, .ENS by far is the winner so far uh, uh, in decentralized domains. Um, but I think there are different utilities and different approaches among, let's say, the three leaders, which is, you know, ENS, handshake and unstoppable all right so do, do you guys mind if i bring it back to the 999 thing a little bit just because yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I agree with you guys on the brand stuff i think that's like a whole separate conversation right um and i'm maybe not the best person to talk i don't know the, the legalities and stuff and i i'm with you guys like that's a, a whole other gray area um but i think the 999 thing is really interesting because um in web 2 right for the most part, people are themselves. They, you know, their name, they don't mind, you know, if you know who they are. Web3, it's this whole new beast, right? Where a lot of people want to stay anonymous. And so what we're seeing is a lot of people are using the sort of 999 as an identifier, basically as an identity. And so the same way, you know, you could have like Mike.eat or Dave.eat, someone that doesn't want to be known, they could have you know, the buyer of 000.eth came in, bought a board, a fresh wallet, bought a board ape of Fidenza and 000.eth. <laughs> yeah, that's like walking so, with your bags packed out of right. boards and, and so, shit. And so, you know, <laughs> I think that as, a, as an anonymous identity, someone could turn themselves into a very known person, at least in the small bubble of Web3, quite quickly if mm -hmm. they buy a very, you know, uh, stand out like three number, like one, two, three dot eight or 999. Um, and I think what's, what's interesting is like, we already see people pay for handles. I'm, I'm from social media world, right? So I know people in real life that have paid 40, 50 K for just their first name on Instagram. Obviously it's under the table stuff. Cause Instagram doesn't allow yeah, that. Right. Yeah, but yeah. you know, people do all that stuff. And so, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. So like how much does it work? Right. So, <laughs> If, you know, if someone's willing to pay 50K for, let's say, you know, my name's Daniel, let's say people pay 50K for Daniel at Daniel on Instagram. Well, then, you know, I think they will pay that much, if not a lot more for Daniel.eth, which can be traded on a 24 seven liquid global marketplace um, in real time. And it's actually some sort of asset that you own. So I think getting away from the brand stuff, because I agree with you guys, I think that where I really think it's, it's interesting and cool is that it's sort of like the first global username marketplace that's just 24 seven liquid or, or somewhat liquid, at least, especially as these categories start getting built out. And so I think it's interesting. It's the first time you can really own a username. And so whether I'm on OpenSea, whether I go to Uniswap, whether I want to receive Ethereum, whether I go on any other Web3, if I go play other side with my board ape, my name will be owned by me across every platform. I think that's yeah. where uh, it's quite interesting. No, I think it is. And 100%. I, and, yeah, absolutely. And I think the brand thing is is interesting and cool and, and, and helps that in that this goes to my point about .eth being the winner in the clubhouse. Because then it's like, as you have brands, Budweiser wants beer.eth and, you know, and, and Puma's got Puma.eth, right? That adoption will help to create a foundation that, you know, will make it so the .eth domains are the ones that you want for your Web3 identity. And, you know, we're still so early. We, even as we go through these waves and the crash and we're in this current lull and all this kind of stuff, it's like, but Web3 is not going away. It's just things are going to continue to evolve and iterate. And I think that without a doubt, you know, the, it, people recognizing that a .eth domain being the way that you can create your unique identifier and your unique identity in this space 
will make the the dope stuff extremely valuable. And like when you talk about, and then it's kind of like you're starting to talk about some of the same principles we look at with .com domains, which is shorter the better, right? Like if you've got a first name .eth, if you've got a three character numeric .eth, and we see the numbers as being an identifier naturally. I mean, people are already like punk six two five nine or whatever, like six five two nine. He owns yeah. six five two nine .eth. He was one of the first people to sort of turn his number because his crypto punk is number six five two nine. He wants to stay anonymous. Boom, six five two nine, and he owns the dot ETH as well. So that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, and I think people like mentally, we can kind of pretty much carry about four numbers. I think once you get beyond yeah. that, it starts to get unless it's like you know, uh, uh, nine hundred two one zero or something. You know what I mean? Like a number right. that we've heard like enough that it has some sort of relevance or some way to remember it, or it's like all zeros or zero 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 one or something. But um, but yeah, no, I think that's the kind of shit that's like you know, and then like I said, the community stuff is really really incredible. And then like as people can just if you can introduce yourself as you know, hey, I'm 260. And it's like, oh, that's what's good, man. I know you. I seen Dude, you on the internet. Yeah, like JT, JT, I went to Ape Fest and I swear, like when people come up to you that have not met you, but you make a friend or you meet someone, they're like, oh, what's your Twitter? My handle before is Daniel Got Hits. It's quite complicated. It's especially if someone's not an uh, English native speaker, they're yeah. all kind of like, oh, what, what, how do you spell that? And so on this Ape Fest, I had the 260 and, my, and I was, people were like, oh, what's your thing? And I was like, Two six zero dot eth, and they were. I was surprised actually. Even people that don't really know that much about ENS, even intrinsically, people just understand. Oh, that's kind of like a flex. It's like short. Like, how do you get that right? Yeah. So I think that's interesting. And what we're seeing a lot of people with uh, more money as well doing is sort of a couple bigger wallets started buying uh, triple numbers, and someone wrote a thesis on Twitter, sort of like. They're just getting exposure. You know, it's just like an index to ENS. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, I think ENS is going to do well. I don't have, I don't have a hundred hours to like dig deep and start trying to find all these random domains, but I want some exposure. Boom. Let me just sweep a bunch of three and fours. Um, so uh, numerics and, and that's so get exposure. So yeah. perfect segue to the piece I was going to mention too. When you talk about ENS, there's the ENS coin as well as a way to get exposure to ENS. Right. And what was super dope was that if you had owned an e e ETH domain, and uh, last year they did the airdrop of the ENS tokens into your wallet. So it was like, you know, we're getting paid thousands of dollars for having paid a hundred dollars to register a domain. I mean, that was though that was during the big like wave where it was like, holy fuck, like we're just making money just by being here. every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's like I think if just... you just got one domain and just set it as your ID uh, for like thirty bucks, I think at the peak the airdrop was worth like fifteen, six, seventeen k or something yeah, for just that, one. Yeah, that's what crazy. I'm saying. And it was like, how are you not? Think, how can you not recognize it? Holy shit! There's something really fucking special and crazy I happening got here. I seats to the Celtics uh, Milwaukee Ooh. game with the money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's said, on the court, well, that's like drew man drew flipped ENS. an ape and turned it into a rolex and it was like so that he could have a physical no, like no no can't get out of here i turned a mutant into a you know <laughs> gun, not and i didn't turn it into a rolex i turned it into the rolex yeah. there you oh, go are you gonna say, are you gonna say which one are you gonna like you gonna give any detail did. didn't you already say it yeah, or is that a different yeah. one there all right, ice, all right. ice We're not, blue ice blue oh. platinum you know, Arabic dial. Everybody, Drew, oh, you got the Arabic? Oh, you got the Arabic. Yeah. That's fire. Everybody I need to get, oh man, Drew, I need to get right? Arabic. So, but that's what's crazy too, is when you can turn some of this digital activity, I mean, we look, we've been doing this for years with domains, but it's like, you know, but even yeah. with the NFTs to be able to turn like, you know, like you said, a mutant into a Rolex and it's like, that's some pretty real shit. And, uh, but anyway, so, you know, you got the ENS token, which, you know, I think is also an interesting way. So are you guys bullish on the token itself? Um, I have like, no clue and I don't want to be, uh, like, I don't want to mention tokens or anything. So I'm scared of Gary Gensler. Cause I, you know, <laughs> I got like, um, yeah, 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 no I, have no clue. Tell you this. I, I don't, I don't even hold it anymore. I, I'm the worst with airdrops. I paper hand, I get an airdrop and my, my, my old, my poverty mindset kicks in, like get the money quick before yes. it disappears. Like, <laughs> yeah. I took my money. Hey, listen, DNA, I'm with so. you. I take that money and turn it into real, you know, I'm out of here. Money. Yeah. yeah, I turn that shit into Bitcoin or 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 uh, cash. <laughs> yeah. So you know, so we're talking flexing. So yeah. So no, I mean, I but I think the ENS token is an interesting thing, and we won't dig too too much into it. But it is another way to get exposure into the ETH and ENS ecosystem, and I think it's just at least worth understanding and knowing that that's an element out there, so folks are at least aware. Because but that was those air that airdrop was one of the best ones that we got. When you look at how much you invested in to what the return was at the height of what that token was worth, and yeah. Uh, 
you know, and I think and, and credit to the ENS and the creators and everything for how the way they've developed this thing. I mean, because they have been a, a, ahead of the curve with a lot of the shit and really embracing and embodying so much of what Web3 is about and the, from the technology to the ethos and beyond, you know. Um, and JT, I, I will say as well, the 999, the, it's it's really an awesome, awesome community. Like, I, you know, it's so diverse in terms of like different thinkers. There's people that do commercial real estate doing a, making a ton of money over there. There's like super nerd Ethereum, like devs, yeah, like yeah. geniuses. Like, you know, in the Board Ape community, you see a lot of really success, successful people. I've met great people, but it's still a 10,000 collection, right? And so yep. there's, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard of Proof Pass. That's like Kevin Rose's thing. Um, and it's, yeah. you know, their whole thing is like, oh, we're an exclusive community. And there's a thousand of those passes. And the floor for those is like 70, 80, 90, ETH. I don't even, it's way up there. And so I think that this 999 thing will become, and it already is, we're seeing articles about it and stuff. I think it will become seen as sort of a really cool decentralized group of like you know forward thinkers and people you want to be around like i learn a lot from these people every day in the chats and stuff like i like just sit and watch and try to learn and people you know wiser than me older than me and have done more and uh i think it's really cool that nobody made money from that ens protocol made the money from people buying and selling these you know there's no leader there's no yeah. founder it's it's not a project or anyone can sort of the founder can't like get in a scandal and like whole thing collapses. It's just a protocol. So I think it's quite yeah. interesting. Uh, that's the last thing I'll say on the 999. No, no, I think you're right. And I think, look, the community aspects in general. I mean, I remember the reason I got into Board Apes, the reason I bought my first Board Ape back in June 1 of last year was because Shane was on these shows talking about not just how dope it was to be able to put it on the wall and like the other shit, but he was like, it's the most fun I've had investing. And he's like, the community around it is really incredible. The people that you're interfacing with, Shane bought a Moonbird so that he could be in the Moonbird Alpha. I like two, you know. I got two Diamond Head Moonbirds. I don't know why I got two. <laughs> you're like, That's just because fuck it, because one is lonely. Well, here, I, I'll, I'll, this is what I'll friends. say about all this. So what's great about all this stuff is everybody makes this their identity, their brand. But then what do you do when you need to cash out? You lose everything. You lose who you are. So you're not going to sell like two Oh, let me get rid of that. Um, you're not going to sell your 260. You're not going to sell it. That's why you need more. That's why you need more. You need a couple more. <laughs> so the key is, you know, I was talking, my, my running partner is an economist and we had a huge two hour talk in a long run. And he told me that I, I've switched from technical trading to sentiment trading by moving mm -hmm. over to, to uh, all the things that I'm doing, even in the stock market. I move to what's popular, what people are afraid to sell because it's their brand identity, what moves quick, what people like. And I've gotten really good at that, of identifying. And right now, like Bored Apes, we're back into a point where the people that are holding, they don't really want to sell. Like they, they really don't want to move. If they're selling at this point, they need the cash. Because so, well, and I think and we're I think, there with, with yeah. 999. I well, underestimated I think, yeah. that with apes too. People are so men. I, I was trying to be too middle curve. Like, oh my God, these have went up so much. I should sell. And I sold my ape. And then the, the regret of not having an ape, it's like so dumb. It's like something so, <laughs> you're just like, but I, I, I bought back in. I bought back in. And, you know, for me, it's quite a, a substantial amount uh, compared to my net worth, which is, you know, it's not that, not that huge. So I was like, man, you know, that's a crazy psychological phenomenon. I can only imagine it's the same for every other holder. And I think that as the, the economy goes digital, 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 someone like me that makes my money with brand deals from the soccer world, but now everything's moving digital. I'm like, bro, who's a brand going to do a Web3 campaign with if they're dropping NFTs? One of these other soccer people on Instagram or the dude that has a board ape and does soccer? Probably me. So I was like, shit, like, what have I done? I got to get this. I got to get the ape back. So, <laughs> oh man, it's very resilient. It's very resilient. I totally agree with Shane on that. Like, it's weirdly like difficult for people to let go of these. Um, and I think it will be the same probably with some numbers too. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, that was always something too, is the board ape holder number kept going up, right? It was sub 5,000 and then it hit 5,000 and 6,000. Then it gets to a point where you're like, shit, like it's going to get to a point where the only way to get an ape is going to be, you're going to have to have somebody who's going to be willing to give up an ape and no longer own an ape. Right. So until, mm. unless, until everyone's over it completely or some, or the, you know, the value is, is no longer there. It's like, so that's why I think with apes, it's like, of course, it's the same deal. Like people are going to diamond hand because yeah. they almost don't have a choice. I think the numerics will be the same because there's even less of them. Right. And I think it's just the key is it being that as long as it remains, in my opinion, you know, sort of the leader, I keep saying the leader in the clubhouse where it's like, that is the definitive one to have just like .com is the best domain to have in the web two space. It's like, if that's the one, then, you know, those, the, you know, those 
thousand, those 999s, man, I mean, they're going to be harder and harder to extract from people. And when you tie it into a community, and this goes to what I was saying, this is what Shane, this got me over the, the wall to spend thousands of dollars on board apes in the beginning, which was this idea that, you know, it's so it's deeper than you think it is. It's not just owning a JPEG. It's not just owning a domain name. It's like, there's the, you know, the value and the benefit. And even like when our boy Josh bought a crypto punk, you know, recently. And he's like, Oh, now I'm in the crypto punk chats. And he's like, and it's crazy. It's like, he's like, it feels like I'm in a room of adults now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you know, the different communities of people based on the assets they own and the access that they get through that, it, you know, that's a big benefit. And that's why like Kevin Rose's shit, like those guys were able to really build something really special. It's like, not just based on the fact that his experience and who he is, but you know, he's able to push forward this whole, like, you know, the benefits of being in the room with him and others like him that are all part of the same group that by itself has a ton of value to people. And it's like, and the only way you get access is by having that digital asset. Media Options is the industry's leading domain broker specializing in domain acquisitions, high value domain sales, and domain name consultation. As pioneers and thought leaders on the subject of the domain aftermarket and domain name value, plus through their clear domain acquisition service, Media Options offers startups and established corporations an unparalleled scope of high value domain options, providing access to domain names and curation technologies not available elsewhere. Media Options believes in the power of a great domain name and is dedicated to helping you obtain yours. Call or email today to put a domain to work for you. I think the interesting thing, so, you know, we've got a couple more minutes. We've we got about 10, 15, and then we'll call it. But the, um, uh, I want to talk about the Arab thing, the China thing, because, you know, we talked about the, the, the numerics having value, first of all, just as a flex in general, right? And the one, the, the, what we came to realize, you know, 10 years ago in, in domains, when the China bubble happened was also that, you know, you've got countries that use numerics and use different characters in different ways, right? So you find out and you're realizing like, oh, you know, the, the alphabet matters, right? So for, for China, the numerics, the number four is a number you do not want to have because the word for the way four is said sounds like the word for death in Chinese, right? So it's like, you know, that, and that's, they're very superstitious, you know what I mean? So you've got a lot of that also playing into it too. And just like, you know, there were certain letters, like you didn't want to have V's or vowels in the, uh, the, the three character, four character, because those were not, there weren't comparative characters in the Chinese alphabet. You know what I mean? So it's wow, like, I didn't know that. Well, so yeah. no vowels either. A E I O U like, no, 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 no V's, no vowels, dog. Wow. You know what I'm if you had a vowel, it was worthless. <laughs> Damn. Well, it wasn't worthless, but it traded at a whole different level. Like no vowels would be like four grand vowels would be 400 you know what i mean yeah. like, holy absolutely. crap so yeah. so let me just throw something out there though real quick because I, I you know i had this observation this morning i'm looking at you know the uh ens market and and you know it, it's really impressive how strong these three number dot e's have, have remained but you know it's like I, you know i was bidding on a bunch of auctions last night at GoDaddy. i was away on vacation for 10 days came back, you know, I was feeling the itch. Ready so I just buy, went, ready to I go. went heavy. <laughs> I went into GoDaddy. I, you know, I put in work and, uh, you know, I'm dropping bids and, and, and I won, I won some, I lost most, but you know, I grabbed a four letter.com. I got KBJJ.com, KBJJ. And I was like, you know, BJJ is, is, is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's huge. It's blowing up all over the world. Put a K in front. There's probably somebody out there with something related to K, you know, KBJJ. I got that for $230, right? And it's like, I couldn't, wow. I was like, $230? Like, what are you talking about? And so just to put it in perspective, it's been probably the last time I could buy a good fourletter.com for $230 was probably 10 years ago. Wow. And so um, I'm looking at the, the, the you know, I, I'm an investor. I don't, I'm a hustler. I'm an investor. I don't really give a shit. If you tell me there's money to be made of dog shit, I will buy and flip dog shit till the cows come home. <laughs> so like I'm looking at this, I'm like, all right, I can go buy, you know, drop 30 grand and buy a three carrot, you know, three number dot ETH. I could buy, you know, four number for a couple grand. I could buy, you know, there's a lot of options out there um, that are, you know, let's say, you know, in the top three, four categories of investment into um, decentralized domains. But then, on the other hand, I got, you know, fourletter.coms that I'm pretty consistently buying for two to $500 right now with very little competition. I'm just dropping blanket bids and it's like, I'll win some, I'll lose some, but I'm just stacking these things for a few hundred bucks. 
that I've been consistently selling for 20 years for, you know, five grand at the low end, 50 grand at the high end, pretty consistently 10 to 25 grand. And so it's like, you know, everything's about opportunity cost in life. And so I look at this and I'm just like, you know, there's a lot of hype. And so, you know, here's the thing. I will 100% hand it to you. I literally, because I was, uh, because I've seen the movie before and I saw the crash happen with all the dot coms and, you know, the numerics and whatever, I capitalized on it, made a lot of money. I just didn't want to go and dip my toe in the water twice. So I oh, missed it. I missed it. And I literally take my hat off to you and I'm super happy for everybody's making money. But I do question uh, whether it's sustainable when there's this arbitrage sure. opportunity. You know, like what if I'm buying domains that have there's zero question. You cannot argue that this dot com, kbjj.com, doesn't, you know, has higher utility and a higher propensity to sell to an actual end user. I'm buying that for a couple hundred bucks. I, I just find it very difficult to, you know, weigh those two options and still come out with, you know, I want to throw more money onto ETH domains. And so here's the thing I want to separate. I think you did an amazing job saying, look, I'm here to talk about the 999 club. And I think you are spot on. There's a thousand of these things. Like there's way more than a thousand people who have, who are balls deep in ETH have made a shit ton of money in ETH and the wider crypto ecosystem. And that are like, yo, this is the flex now. It's like, I got a board ape. I got a crypto punk. Now I got a three number dot ETH. It's like, <laughs> that's a no brainer. Like that's going to, ha- it, it, it there will be fluctuation. There will come a moment when, you know, I think we've got some pretty dark days ahead. Yeah. People are going to get punched in the gut. People with weak hands are going to be like, oh, fuck, what did I do? I fucked up. I need to sell. And so there will be opportunities. There will be price, you know, discovery. But probably if we look out two years, three years out, these things are going to hold up probably pretty well. This is not financial advice. This is my <laughs> observation personally, right? I, I think... Probably Kanye that show, 999, Kanye. that 999 club is probably going to do just fine because there's literally a fucking thousand of them. They are super cool to have as a wallet address. And, uh, you know, that's it. But in the broader discussion of, you know, these decentralized domains, whether it's any, any pick your, pick your poison, um, I really do think that we are in, you know, a bubble. And I, I, I would, you know, encourage people just to deeply understand what are these? What can you do with them? Because if you're comparing it, you're going to be like, yo, dot com is for boomers and this shit's dope. Like, dude, go get kicked by a donkey. Like, that's not the way to think about this. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> go get like, kicked by a donkey. Yo. Yeah. No, you know I mean, think that's we're, a good point. Hey, we're well, and, and Chase movie. So, you know so, what I mean? Yeah. straight. No, but I think it's important. And I think, you know, well, because we, we saw Rick Schwartz like mixing it up with some of the dot ETH heads and it turned into like a big old thing and he was blocking like, everybody. Rick he blocked me because I had a board. He has since unblocked me. <laughs> It, you know, I, thanks, I Rick, him by the back. way. He unblocked Listen, me, then I blocked big him. Big up to Rick Schwartz because the dude is a domain gangster. Like, I got mad props, and I don't have mad props for a lot of people in the domain space. But Rick Schwartz, I take off my hat. Dude is – he's the truth. I love yeah, I Domain love Rick. king, baby. I, I like, king, baby. I also have a, a propensity to love volatile people. But, like, <laughs> but like, but like, you know, he has done it. You know what I mean? He got up out the chair – did it on a way that none of y'all are ever going to fucking do it. So just shut the fuck up and listen. I liked to it. Dude, I liked it. I smart. thought it was cool. Oh, no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm speaking to the broader audience. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, so, no, no, so, sure. And, and it's, but, but, but he's also Warren Buffett and just doesn't fucking get it. Right. And so like, you know, I think it's really important to listen to his lessons because he has really good points and you should listen. Right. But this is a new technology that he doesn't fucking need to adopt. It, yeah. it, if, if, if these things become the most valuable assets on earth, it will not affect him in any way whatsoever. He's still going to be doing just fine. Right. And so you have to just understand where people are at, right? Like Warren Buffett, the dude is the greatest investor ever, but like the dude doesn't need Bitcoin. Like, 
Bitcoin isn't going to solve any fucking problems for Warren Buffett, right? L- literally, Bitcoin doesn't even, it's not even big enough to solve the problem of what to do with the excess cash that his fucking company has because he'd literally take out the whole market. It's like, so you got to understand where people are coming from, right? It's not that Warren Buffett's wrong. He just doesn't fucking know. He doesn't care. Yeah, this is an irrelevant technology for the, for the worldview that he's got, right? And Rick Schwartz is the same thing. And so this is, you know, anyways, yeah, that was a long rant. No, no, J- JT, I, JT, yeah. could, could, I, could I respond to what Drew said uh, real quick? Because I thought it was Please. interesting. Yeah, um, man. So I totally agree with Drew, like someone experienced and knowledgeable like Drew that's been through it, like the opportunity cost, I'm totally, under. I think kbjj.com for 200 bucks or a random four digit ENS, like I totally understand that. I think where it gets interesting is just like people like me who totally admittedly, I never was into uh, web two domains. I missed it. I was too, you, you're too late. I'm too young. Right. Yeah, so I missed you, the really you big wave. Man. <laughs> and, um, you know, but I've been going back doing my homework, I, you know, the Michael Mann and domain King and you guys and learning, and I'm trying to really like understand, you know, cause I think the lessons are applicable the same way. Shane's but, making the Michael Mann face. We're going to have to edit that part of it uh, out. Yeah. But other okay, than that, it's all good. I'm, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Mike Mann's got his place too. Like I said, I'm I like can't. Oh, no, it's fine. a joke. It's a joke. Everybody yeah, chill. Well, out. All right, go ahead. Keep Every, continue, Daniel. I'm sorry. Go, go, right? go. So, go. Um, <laughs> what I think is is cool, right? Is that you got like kids in literally the Leban- Lebanon and yeah. in like Algeria buying like fucking four digit ENSs, right? And like they probably are not the type of person that is even into you know Web two domains. And so, what I would say to someone out there, if they're a Web two domainer. I think that we all know this, right? That feeling of like, it's not just a JPEG when you click buy and then you see that NFT and like something you feel, oh, I own this in, in that wallet and you see it, mm-hmm. it, it, you need to like experience it. So what I'd say to someone is literally, if you want to try with e- ENS and you're like, man, this shit is garbage. Like these crypto, like idiots, this has no use case. I totally see where you're coming from. Like anyone out there listening, but throw 50 bucks into a five digit number throw 80 bucks or something into a five digit number on OpenSea. buy it even with your credit card. You can buy some, um, not financial advice, right? yeah, but, uh, favorite, you, know, just, you know, get, get your foot in the door and just post it on Twitter Buy a five digit ENS feel how it looks like to own that in your wallet, a digital token. You already know with dot coms, you own it, right? It's a digital asset, but post it on Twitter and just see what it feels like and just start like getting out there. You will probably be like, what the hell? I've never gotten this response from buying a five character thing on, on you know, uh, yeah. you know, any web two things. So just to experience the how big and how viral and probably to what Drew said may be overhyped and totally admit that it, it probably could be overhyped. But just get your foot in the door and try it out with like a little small cost. I think it's not the worst idea to just taste it and see what it's like, I think. Yeah, look, we hey, got said it as I just want to make one more point. No, sure. These are facts, okay? So 100% agree with what you just said. I think, I think you know, don't knock it till you try it, right? In everything in life, just don't knock it till you try it. But uh, for the record, Rick Schwartz owned a dot .enet, a dot .eth domain before pretty much, I would say probably before everybody except maybe the first <laughs> couple, 100, 200 people on the planet. Holy no crap. And the reason is because I bought, Rick Schwartz.eth for him. I bought Mike Birkins.eth for him. I bought uh, Frank Schilling.eth for him. I bought, you know, bunch, a bunch of, bunch of, you know, the, the, the real OG uh, uh, domain guys. When, when dot ENS, uh, when ENS names launched, I thought, all right, you know, we, we should at least as sort of the, 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 the baton holders from web two, we should be, you know, exploring this. We should be messing around with it. We should Smart. understand what is this, right? And so I got those for them. Um, I don't know if he still has it, but I did get and that me for too. him. So, so, he made, so he made yep. an Ethereum wallet? Domain Schwartz made an Ethereum wallet and you sent it to him? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The ENS community is going to love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yep. I, I swear to God. He had a dot ETH domain before any of y'all. I guarantee you. <laughs> There is probably not a single human being watching this show who had a .eth domain before Rick wow. Schwartz. Well, wow. so and and I this am was, here. 
<laughs> so yeah, I mean, he was a pioneer, but uh, well, look, he's the king. But no, look, a couple of things though. I think that the community piece is and I'm important. I'm not trying to kick some kids for a story. Well, ass. There's been points in my career where yeah, yeah. I no, literally no. would have hit the dude with a, 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 you know, my truck if I if I walked in front of it. But, uh, but you know, <laughs> but it's all you just love, gotta though. give pro- You gotta give props where props are due. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean? No, look, and we're always about that on the show. But I think the a couple of quick points that I want to make. Um, you know, I think we've seen it. There are a ton of different domain extensions now, right? I mean, there's literally hundreds and hundreds, right? So there's always been other options other than things like .com and .net and .org, and now we're into IOs and XYZs, and those involve, you know, those are their own discussions to be had. But .co's, whatever, you know. Um, but ETH to me, the blockchain stuff is really interesting because now you're talking about different utility, really, you know. And when you go from identity and community and the ability to send ETH, and I think Shane made an excellent point earlier, you know, about you know having a name that's also you know your identity, but also makes it even easier to send you money and less you know with less opportunity to fuck it up and and those kinds of things. I think that's all super dope. The community piece to me is really crazy. I think you also you know when you're talking about NFTs, and we've talked a lot about NFTs on this sh- on this show as well about you know, you have these markets that are more liquid than domains are. Then regular domains are, you know, it's very, we've always said they're very liquid domain, uh, digital assets. NFTs are more liquid because you've got these, you know, these platforms, these marketplaces that, you know, are, are you know, for, for projects and, and things that are actually in demand will constantly sell. Well, it's not segregated, right? Like if I want to buy a three numeric.com, how do I find them all in the same place and just click buy? Well, this is a great way to wrap this up for the next 10 and then we can shut it down. It's that is tools, the tools around ENS. And I, is yes. there still room to grow for marketplaces and things like right now, you know, where are the tools where you can track to see like what's happening? How do you buy them? Like, let's talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts around that stuff. Cause I think that is also really, really interesting. Right. I would love to tell people this cause this is really <laughs> cool info. And uh, you know, I wish I even knew some of these earlier. Um, I was pretty early in this, but you know, there's people way earlier than me. And so the best one in my opinion right now, and I'm not associated or affiliated with any of these, but the best one is ens.vision, which just goes to show, right? If the .eth was resolvable, we could have a .eth. So it's not. <laughs> yeah. So you still need a, a web two domain. ens.vision. It's called ENS Vision. That's a great one. Um, you have all these categories. You could look at three number uh, domains, four numbers. You could look at three letter dictionary words, four letter dictionary words, uh, adjectives, boom, 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 first names, surnames, female names. It's all, all, all this stuff, right? That's so it's dope. really cool. They're building out these categories and you could just see you, you sorted by price, sorted by recently listed, all this kind of stuff. See, see the activity. I found ladybug, not, ladybug.eth there for two ETH. That's not bad. Boom. It. This probably sounds it? good. Yeah. I bought ladybug.eth for two ETH. Yeah. Nice. Did you do it like on like recently or on this call on the show? No, I bought it like a week ago, just uh. using that tool. <laughs> I mean, I use a tool. I wouldn't have found later. Oh, you I mean, use I you use ENS.vision? Mm-hmm. So oh, I went through oh, all the I was always I went only through the insects, everything. I didn't know about that. I only I only use ENS.tools. So ENS tools is another great one. So the, the developer behind that sort of uh, started working with the NS vision and they sort of teamed up. They're, they're really awesome guys. They're like super giga brain, like kind of nerd, but genius guys. Yeah. And like, just really about ENS. And so ENS tools um, that Drew just mentioned is awesome for finding expired ones. And some people will be mad at me for saying this, cause this is, you know, good alpha. But if you go to ENS dot tools and you go to, there's all these tabs, you can click expired and you can basically go down. So I'll explain real quick what happens if you don't renew your ENS, if you forget, or if you simply don't want to renew for the cost, it goes back into, you know, a Dutch auction thing where it starts at like a hundred million dollar premium, right? Which is kind of crazy, but over the course of 28 days, it just falls on a curve every day until it goes back to zero. And the first person to grab it, um, basically gets their domain. So we even saw like, um, uh, uh, pwc.eth Pricewaterhouse Coopers. They actually registered someone, let it expire and they were watching and they, boom, they bought it for like, uh, I think about 42 ETH or something. I forget ex- the exact amount. Nice. Wow. Um, yeah. but yeah, and I got confirmation, uh, th- from someone I trust that it, it, you know, it is PWC that got it. Um, so, you know, not a hundred percent confirmed, but like, I trust that that person, um, and so, yeah, so you can look there and you'll see some stuff that people will just let expire and boom, maybe they just didn't, you know, realize that .eth is booming again, uh, you know, at, since yeah. they got it, or they just <laughs> forgot the wallet address. Like, unfortunately what happened with Drew, whatever. So, you know, you could get some real grails on there, um, for like cheap. When yeah, and we've been, look, we've been, I mean, you talk about Drew and Shane <clears throat> and expiring domains have been, I mean, shit, I ran Namejet for five years, you know what I mean? Which is like, <laughs> so when you're talking about like, so this to me is really, really interesting and dope. 
So it talk, so when you register Just for the a, record, <laughs> Namejet is the expire, you know, one of the three, four biggest expiring domain platforms for for Web two domains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. and uh, so um, this so this is near and dear to me and us in general, which I think is dope. So ENS tools, tools is where you're checking that out. So for when you register an e ETH domain, uh, how many years do you register it for? You can up to how many? Like, oh, what's it, so, it, 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 this should you, be yours, man. You got to get the run it up dot e. <laughs> let's run go. it up. That's good. That's good. That's JT, I mean, man. That's all you. Let's go. Grab you it. Could register it. Expired. <laughs> Boom. There you go. It's expired. Shit. Get that. But yeah, yeah. No, you can register for as long as you want. I mean, I don't, I typically just try to register for a couple of years. Um, but it's, it's really interesting, uh, to see like people's strategy on that too. I mean, so recently people realized, you know, if you go through the contract, you can actually mint for like as short as one month. And so it's, that's something I would say for people to be real careful oh, about when a new, when, when a new, yeah. right. When a yeah, new tasting. subsection, this is the new right? domain tasting. Oh, I love right? that. Frank well, Schilling, man. Where's Frank at? Like, this is how yeah. he made, you know, so real quick. So, okay. So you can, uh, register for whatever period of time. How do you know when it's coming up for renewal? Now I have a few dot ETH domains, so I should know this, but you got, you, know, you got to go to just ENS dot app, which is the actual ENS dashboard. And you just click my account and it will, whatever MetaMask you're It'll logged in you on, it will show yeah. you and you can extend them. You can bulk extend. So you could just like tap select all and just boom, extend. You could extend each one. It depends, but you're not going to get like an email notification. This is where the web three thing, some people are not probably going to be into it just because yeah, no, it's I not, think that's a good point. It's, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. It requires more accountability and, perf and personal responsibility, which I think, yes. look, I'm all about it. The, uh, so real quick. So when you buy a domain from some, when you're buying one off of a, where are you buying them at, by the way, open C or where like open C you, yeah, I've bought some on open C just secondary. Like, so I think a super undervalued play is just go on open C and and go to the ENS uh, category and just in the search box, just type in NFT and bro, people will sell like NFT. I'm into soccer. This is not one, but similar stuff like NFT soccer for like, or like soccer NFT, or they'll be selling it for like 50 bucks. And I, so I think like these dot ETHs will be super applicable. If you're starting an NFT company, it's kind of weird if you don't own the ETH at this point. So Look, I think, yeah, for our, we've got ape in productions at ETH. We've got, yeah. uh, we've got AIP. AIP. We got AIP. We got AIP. 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 Yeah. You know That's what I'm fire. saying? So, so people are letting go of some good ones, man. NFT, like some stuff that if you, the dot com would be like 50 K. Right, in oh, my opinion. Well, AIP.com so, would absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's a $100,000 domain. I mean, right? Yeah, even more, like, right. let's say NFT soccer or soccer NFT or something. I mean, that, that I don't know if it'd be 50K, but it wouldn't be 50 bucks as a URL, as a dot com, right? So, so, yeah. So, people, if they list them for sale, they're listing them on OpenSea, where are uh, OpenSea? Look yeah, rare, looks rare. Or like, is there an ENS? 99% OpenSea. Okay, I was gonna say. So, there, so as far as there is there an opportunity to develop a more sophisticated ENS marketplace, so though? Many people are doing that right now. It's sort of like the ENS space race. There's like three, yep. four different teams of heavy hitters that everyone is coming out with their marketplaces. And I think like literally, I think ENS Vision Marketplace is dropping within like seven days, type shit. It's okay. like really, really close. And uh, ENS Vision is also a great place to bulk registers. That they invented a tool that you can just add a load of ENSs to your cart that you want to mint. So if you wanted to mint like, you know, whatever you want to mint, like just line them up. You could do 20 at a time. And anyone that's minted one on the old way knows that it's it's a process. You got to click a thing. You got to wait for it to go for a minute to make sure no, no duplicate people are trying to mint the same thing. Right. Then you got to click it again. Then you got to wait again. It's like the bulk registration is uh, really cool as well on ENS Vision. So so you said before about the three character numerics, are they still $600 a year for renewal fees or what's the deal? Yeah, on the renewals? it's 600 or 700. I forget exactly. So it's weird. They actually price the renewals in USD. So it just changes based on what ETH is. So when ETH was like 4K, these were like 0 0.2 ETH. Now they're like 0 0.6 or something. It's to like renew. So ETH. It, yeah, it starts, <laughs> you know it starts, saying, getting, like, uh, it starts yeah. getting expensive. You got to, the carry costs on them are going to be a little bit brutal. I'm not looking forward to like some of the, the people, you know, with a lot of three uh, stuff, they might need to let some drop out because so it's be based on right so it's based on characters now are three character yes. letters is the three l's are they 600 a year to renew yes. as well three three l's or three numbers or a mix they're like yep. 600 a year then the fours are like maybe like two uh 150 a year something like that and then from five and, and up it's like 10 bucks a year and then there's also the emoji shit is starting to like is part of it where you got the flags right. and the numbers. So how do you do the, the emojis like they just count as a character from for so it's it's crazy so what you know people started mentioning that these emojis of flags are 
you know, they're basically uh, two characters. Okay. Okay. Because of Unicode or something. Sure. Punicode, so yep, I was, yep, yep, or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Or uh, Unicode. I think Punicode is a, is a whole separate one, but they're two characters. And so the minimum you can do is three. And so I was messing around on the ENS registration thing. And I just put in like, I was like, okay, what's the country with the most money? United Arab Emirates, UAE. So I put the UAE flag. And I was like, wait, so I could just put the number one, like UAE one. And it's just like, it would let me register it. No one had taken it. I'm like, man, that's kind of a flex like UAE one. I mean, I don't know, but it's kind of like a degen play, like, fuck it. So I just minted UAE one and Saudi Arabia one. Um, and so the only every single country was available. The only one that was taken was USA one and uh, everything else. So I got Saudi Arabia one and UAE one. And what happened was uh, there's a dude, Leo, he's doing a great job as well with uh, with all these, uh, you know, ENSs and sort of educating people. He's kind of a newer guy for sort of, a, you know, a Web2. Marketing yeah, he's got the gutter guy. cat. The gutter cat's his uh, thing, right? I think it's someone good. different. I think someone different. But he uh, so Leo's from Australia. And so what he did, he was like, man, this 999 that we have, it's a global thing. The cheapest one's already 25, 30 K it's, it's already very inaccessible for a, a newcomer. But what he wanted to do was basically create an Australia 999. So, you know, a community of a thousand people that want to do web three and, and collaborate and, you know, build with each other and connect in Australia. And so what he did was he was like, yo, we're just going to make a discord. If your ENS uh, name is an Australia flag and then either a one, two or three digit. So technically it's like 1,110, right? Not nine, 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 but it's like Australia flag plus some digits, a one, two or three, you get in this discord. And so they're already about to do a, a real life meetup like uh, soon, I think and stuff. And it's quite interesting. And so um, I, I don't, I'm not gonna, I caught some heat for that. And I had to sort of, I, I kind of like, maybe like was too, um, you know, pr like pushed it or like said, oh, this is really cool. And people, I forget like how fucking much people follow my stuff in ENS and I had only minted some. And then people just started running with it being like, this is the new biggest thing. And I was like, oh man, I kind of like should have been way more cautious of like posting that. <laughs> um, and so you I actually- started a bull not, run, like, dog. I, yeah, I kind of <laughs> accidentally started that. And so I don't want that. And then, yo, you know what I did? So after people started minting them, I was like, fuck, I'm going to mint a bunch too. And I minted like a hundred and I, dude, I just started seeing, okay, people are going way too crazy with these but i like them because they're so cheap because they're five characters so it's like 10 bucks a year i saw it as a cool way to onboard people i got a bunch of brazil flags i'm half brazilian i was going to send them to a bunch of homies but real quick it, it went sour and so what i did to just rectify and be like yo i sent all my flags to vitalik.eat because i was okay. like i didn't want to send them to the burn address because then you're like burning flags right and so oh, what shit. i said to people is I, I was like yo you know, I was like, my bad. I, I didn't mean to like- Now you're burning flags? <laughs> no, no. So I sent them to Vitalik.eat. I figure he's not going to do shit with nothing. He's fucking multi-billionaire or whatever. So yeah. I think they're cool. I think that as the 999 gets bigger, let's say I have to sell 260.eat. Let's say the floor is a million bucks. And I'm like, I'm like bro. I can't like, imagine how it. much shit gets sent to that wallet. Everywhere. Right? So <laughs> I, I was like, I, I think this is a cool idea of these international sub subsections of it. Let's say I sell 260.eat. I would love to have- USA 260. And maybe I could be in a group of cool people here in the US, whatever. Um, but I, I had to be like, oh, let me take my foot off the gas on that. I probably went too quick on that. And so just to like show people I had no ill intent, I sent all of them to Vitalik. But I told people, I was like, yo, I'm keeping UAE one and Saudi Arabia one. I got to yeah. keep those because I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those but, are uh, dope. Yeah. So it's cool. You could just get into weird creative stuff. You know, you can't really do an emoji thing with dot coms, I'm guessing. So, you know, you have some weird well, stuff. Well, you that can. Comes out, you can. There's also, well, that's another thing that, you know, these the, the yeah. grandfathers, this guy, Greg Osterick, he got all of them. He, he, he got in and then, you know, he got grandfathered in. I think he even had to put up a fight to keep them. Holy but he's crap. got them all. He got the little snowman, telephone. I remember well, I was like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. He showed, sat down with me, he showed me, and I was like, holy shit. And then I always regret it. He gave me an opportunity to buy one for like 20 grand. I never did. And then, you know, now you well, we can't sold, get these things. We sold, like, the, we sold the mushroom.ws, didn't we? No, nah, but still? that's the dot .ws. That's, that's like the, you know, phase two bullshit, you know. Yeah, let's not get, yeah, because that's the whole other yeah, thing. That's a different. Lanes. There's yeah, a whole. I different didn't like animal. emojis. I, I don't like but the emojis. But the dot .coms, so the, the emoji dot .coms are gangster. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. this is real puny code, emoji dot .coms. You've got the snowman. You've got the, you know, these are like. You know, legacy. Yeah, that'd be emojis. dope if you're known as the snowman. Those, that'd those be things. Shit, like, snowman. Cool. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, look, like, we, we covered. Yeah, we and we covered a lot of ground. I don't want to get into you know dive off into that that rabbit hole. That's a sub rabbit yeah. hole of the rabbit hole yeah. that we're down. 
But yeah, all right. Well, dope, man. Look, I mean, I think it's, you know, I th- you know, I'd love to do a follow up show at some point and just literally like literally take the audience through. All right. Let's go register a, a, mm. a, a, an ENS domain and then let's set it up as a wall. Let's show them like, you know, because it, it's not necessarily intuitive to a lot of people. And like, I think that would be really productive. Just show people like, look, here, go spend five bucks, register this thing, set it up, put your wallet address in it and, uh, you know. Show them how it works. Show and I think ENS, uh, ENS is doing a, they're <laughs> releasing you. a way to, uh, what's to up, buy Blue? them with fiat. Oh, what's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Thank but you, yeah, e- e- ENS oh, wow. is working on that so you can buy it okay. with USD soon. Yeah, no, cool. well, look, and I think the accessibility, Thanks, and, and, you know, and I think the thing you're talking about, ENS vision, creating the marketplace, I think as those happen, you know, I think there's still room to run with a lot of these, if, you know, in the right sort of segments, in the right pockets. I think like, you know, the 999 stuff, I think, you know, the short names, like the same things that make comms valuable. I think as long as there's additional utility and community and, and other value around these, it's like, you know, I keep saying like Web3 is not going away. I think that there's still, you know, I think to Drew's point, look, you got to be careful about the bubble aspects and anybody investing in anything, you know, it's like you, they've got to be careful and not, you know, spend more than they can lose and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, to I, me, I think you just, you made a very good point right at the very beginning of this conversation. You said, look, at the end of the day, the value comes down to two, three, you know, three things. And it's like, you know, scarcity, use, utility. I would probably replace use with adoption, yeah. but it's, you know, scarcity, adoption, and utility. Yeah. Right? And so just look at everything you invest in and just look at it and go, okay, well, you know, is this creating utility, right? Yeah. Is there adoption? And, uh, uh, you know, and just is, you know, yeah, are there some yeah, that space around the different? Can it be easily I just say, are you more popular for owning it? That's how I look at it. If I buy this mm. and I put it on Twitter, do you think better of me because I cloud own? more well, cloud? Look, cloud, cloud the flex that comes into the that comes right, into the utility right, piece. Add, that's, well, yeah, that's true. But I think that's when you look at the utility, utility yeah, I think yes. you got to think like you know the cloud is a thing. Like, look, I got. Oh, well, you can't see it, but I got my board ape. I got Lincoln on my watch. I mean, I was at my kid's basketball Man, practice the other day. Y'all still on that cryptocurrency shit? We off that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lou just came in here and dropped me. He gave, look at this. This is the new currency. Right? <laughs> these are chips? No, these are squashed uh, Nespresso capsules. <laughs> oh, shit. Y'all doing some next shit over there, Yeah, we, doing all, we, we have that next That's shit. The next we're going to start a market for squashed Nespresso capsules. It's going to be like the carbon market. But I was speaking to kids. I was at my, my kid's uh, basketball practice. One of his buddies, you know, they're like 12, rolls up. He's like, yo, what's that on your watch? I'm like, oh, that's my uh, that's my ape. He's like, y'all got a, you got a board ape? And I'm like, yeah, I got, I got a couple. And he's like, dude, that's dope. Dude, you know? it blows people's mind when you have a board ape. It is so funny. <laughs> oh. Especially if you're like, yeah, I guess if you're someone's dad, they're probably like, what the hell? Oh, dude. Man, I, mean- I, I was on a little island in the Maldives. I was on a tiny little island. Literally, there's probably... I don't know, a hundred people, let's say on this whole Island and uh, middle of the Maldives, Indian ocean, middle of bum fuck nowhere. Right. And I'm at breakfast with my family. We're eating breakfast. And uh, this, the, you know, kid runs up to me and he's like, you know, his dad comes up behind him. He's like, you got a board ape. Cause I, I actually had my, <laughs> I actually had a mutant. I had a make shirt on that, you know, the mutant uh, 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 ape yacht club. And I had the the, the make shirt on, and dude comes see, oh, you got a board ape, and I was like, I got like twenty, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he was like, oh, and then you know the whole family became like my best friends, man. It was every day I was hanging out with them, talking. You know, we're still friends, talking it's on crazy. you know WhatsApp almost well, every day. Because he, because he has an ape, right? Like he yeah, had an he ape. Had, he had an ape too, and they and were like, oh, trying to debate, get yeah. And one of the points that like, Drew made to me when you told me the story about how, like, you know, I think dudes from Hong Kong or right, yeah. and basically how it's, you know, we're still like the apes as a flex. There are, you know, it's still like just starting, and and you know, and oh, I think that's snap, why really. And that's mm-hmm. why I think it's like as we come into these things and you talk about the, you know, the cream is going to rise to the top. But you can't, but hold on, hold on. Before we, you know, start telling everybody, oh, yo, yeah, yeah. Get, don't ignore market dynamics. You know, you've yeah. got some pretty, pretty big macro headwinds coming at you. Like a, you know, like a, oh, like yeah, a, look, like like the, a right hook from Mike Tyson. Yeah. You know, so like, you know, I think everything we're saying is true, but you have to just, you know, you have to handicap it with the fact that, you know, the world's about to go off a cliff. 
Well, we've had, we talk about this on most of our recent shows about the economic headwinds and just, you know, the storm clouds that we're going to continue to have to navigate through. We are not, you know, we, we've got a lot of shit that, you know, in a lot of places and you're seeing it like you're having economies collapsing and revolutions in Sri Lanka and Ecuador and, and even China, unrest in China. It's like, mm. you know, and this is just the tip of the iceberg based on this global inflation and everything else and just war in Ukraine. I look, there's no doubt all of that, I think, exists under the, the umbrella of like just, you know, troubled times. Right. But separating that and, you know, we're, we're never in a vacuum. But I think that but my point is and, and we're getting close to closing it all up here is that, you know, yo, six J J J J J J. So six times J dot E expired. You can get it for 800 bucks. Right. By now. the way, Drew is about to go heavy. Just so you know, you're going full yeah. DGen. I got to pull up ENS tools and start getting some of these right now. Bro. No, I'll tell you right now. Yeah, the you, Drew's you, portfolio, no. the portfolio of our dot ETH. Wait, is he the sniper? To... What was his AKA? The sniper? Yeah, the sni yeah, that's sniper what Tim that's dog? what Timberland calls him. Timberland calls oh, him the man. sniper. Okay, man. we got to be careful. Okay, these are about to get sniped. <laughs> right now. Hey, what does Timberland call me? I forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he calls you honey shame, baby. Sugar honey shame. But um the uh so yeah, so look, I think it's the the point I'm making is this though, is the like, you know, the cream's going to rise to the top. You know, we're still early in a lot of facets of Web3. It's going to continue to go through phases. I think the ETH domains, can, as, as long as they can maintain as the bell, the, the leader in, you know, in the clubhouse, I've said it a, a dozen times, you know, so if you're playing the drinking game based on that, you're drunk by now. But it's like, you know, those are going to, and, and big brands are buying them. And if that's the case, then you've got brands that are going to, oh, you're jumping into NFTs? Well, you got to have your .eth. I think that as a, as a complimentary piece to their, you know, NFT Web3 approach, their digital approach in general, oh, you've got your .com, you need the .eth. I mean, you're going to see some of that. I think the, the, the closed communities, the alpha groups, the scarcity, the, the, the top, the cream of the crop, has some really there's interesting interesting stuff there and uh it's gonna be a wild JT, ride man yeah can so. i say one last thing that they will kill Please. me for if i forget this yeah um, of course man and when i say they i don't mean ens they don't give a fuck about me they they're i mean the community um but <laughs> like the last thing i'll say is what people are really excited for and uh maybe the dot uh, the web two people may sort of scoff at this and be like yeah we've seen this before but I think that it's an interesting new way is like there's going to be ens subdomains very soon and what some of these devs are already playing around with is kind of nuts. It's a, have you, have you guys went to ape fest this year? Anyone? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I was there. So you know how it's stressful when you want to like basically prove your ownership of your, your board ape, right? Sure. It's, yeah. It's token proof did a good job, you, but it's oh, still man, a pain in the proof. dick. You know what I'm saying? It, it, exactly. So with these subdomains now, like if you had, you know, whatever, uh, JT or like AIP.eth, your, your ape is in that wallet, right? You could issue, that's your ledger. You could issue a subdomain, called, you know, apefest.aip. And then the subdomain is its own separate NFT. So you'd have two ENSs now in your wallet. You'd have mm -hmm. aip.eth and you'd have apefest.aip. Now you could just send apefest.aip.eth to a hot wallet that's no risk. And because it's a subdomain of the other one that your ape is in, now you can verify ownership of your ape across anywhere and you don't have to keep taking your ape out or risk it or connect it. So there's different things like that. And then there's also just uh, Board Ape Yacht Club owns BAYC.eth. They could issue vanity fucking domains like, you know, king.baYC or God or number one or whatever. And so that would also verify that you're not a random fake ape, you know, even on Twitter with the hexagon, you could just sure. upload a random picture as an NFT and people think it's an ape, but you can't fake the subdomain. You'd have to have an ape, things like sure. that. They so could use the subdomains it, for like per like four character subdomains for the apes, like 2390. For the apes and it's almost like making, you know, CRM software type shit where all your stuff, if you're a company of all the subdomains of holders and things like that. So I don't want to get too into it, but that's a no, big but topic I think it's right a, now. a really good point to make. And I think it's, ties into the idea of the utility and i think it's that you know and it also highlights the fact that where you have really smart people and a really strong community driving a lot of really cool evolution that's why i was asking you about tools because i do think there's still a lot of room to run to create the kind of things like the marketplaces and stuff that will make it even easier to participate and you know and the dot eth domains are more liquid than even dot com domains based on the fact that the way that nfts work right so i think that creates another interesting element which you know is a you know sort of a you know check mark in the in the cool column for dot eth domain so 
Yeah, well, look, we covered a lot of ground. And my dude, do you have anything else you want to shout out or anything before That's it. you go? Uh, thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys. You guys are fucking OGs and like legends. Not even OGs because you guys aren't even old, but like just freaking legends <laughs> in the domain space. And uh, yeah, no, I'm just for shit. real. Like, just, yeah, 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 thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks for having me on. Like, I learned so much and I'm looking forward to like keep learning from you guys and other people out there that have been before and done great things. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, no doubt, man. Likewise, we'll man. We'd love to have you back. And like I said, I'd love to actually do a follow-up show where we actually just like sure. really hands-on, walk some people through, like, look, here's how you register one. Here's how you, you know, just play by play. Yeah. Anytime. Setting up yeah, the wallet, awesome. you know. Well, we, could, we could even have, we could even get, them. maybe get Rick on the show and do some like, you know. We yeah, could good, have luck. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, no, but anyway, um, but yeah, no, look, there's definitely going to be a lot more to come. This was great connecting with you like this. You and I had been connected on social, but like this was our first opportunity to really like, you know, like connect, connect and, uh, you know, and, and all the stuff you're doing and the energy, man. And I think that you guys are on to something. I mean, you know, there's going to be Super winners positive. and losers and stuff, Love but the, it. the yeah. vibe is dope. Yeah. And, uh, you know, on the forefront of a lot of really cool shit. So we'll see how it shakes out. But Drew, Shane, thank you as always, Daniel, of course, man, this was the, this was dope. Uh, and to the audience, like I say, in every show, thank you guys for tuning in without you. There's no us, you know, where to find us, send us some comments. We're easy to find on Twitter, hit us on the actual domain Sherpa site and uh, big shout out to Namejet, Dan.com, our sponsors. And, uh, you know, to everybody else who helps to, to Billy, to everybody else who helps make this shit what it is. And uh, we'll see everybody next time here on Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Peace out, y'all. Peace. Peace. It don't matter what you do.